Should I sit? Should I stand? I'm gonna stand. Hi flower friends, it's Nicole from Flower Hill Farm and today I'm teaming up with Sunflower Steve to talk about zinnias. So Sunflower Steve, he is a flower farmer in Wisconsin. He's been flower farming for more than 20 years and he is pretty profesh. So he is mostly a wholesale supplier. He does not sell bouquets at farmer's market. He used to way back when he first started, but now he strictly sells to wholesalers. His farm is private. He does no retail business at all. And we so lovingly call him Sunflower Steve because he created an amazing new sunflower variety that is in the process of coming to retail. So anyway, so Sunflower Steve also grows things other than sunflowers. He grows tens of thousands of zinnias every single year. And he grows it much differently than I do because he's growing on a much larger scale. So I start them inside and I transplant out seedlings. Sunflower Steve puts his seeds directly into the ground. So we're gonna see how he does it coming up in just a little bit. But first I wanna tell you guys the zinnias that I'm growing this year. And I have more than 20 varieties. I'm so excited. The ones that I'm starting today is a seed packet that I got from Floret. And it's called Little Girl Flower Mix, right? Nope, that's not right. Little Flower Girl Mix. <laughs> <laughs> so this one is, it caught my eye on the website and I'm really excited to try these colors. They're just beautiful, I'm excited. So the way that I start seeds is in soil blocks. So I let them grow up in little soil blocks for a few weeks before putting them out into the soil. Okay, here are the other ones that I'm growing and most of these are the Benares Giant mixes, which is highly recommended for cut flowers. So I have the Benary Giant Coral Benary Giant Orange, Benary's Giant Salmon Rose, Benary's Giant Deep Red. Now these are also, they're all called Benary's Giant Dahlia mixes. Some of these last year had four inch blooms. They were beautiful. I only grew a few varieties of the Benary's last year, but my flower friend Gina grew a lot of them. And uh, that was some of the ones that I sold here at my farm were some of hers. So we kind of combined our zinnias and hers were amazing. So good. Anyway, I have the Benary's purple, white, and white. I love the white. It's absolutely striking, but it was also the one to have the most bug damage. They were just attracted to white. I find that that's with all dahlias, or all flowers really, excuse me. It was just something with white flowers. I don't know what it is. Maybe there's some scientific reason behind it, but. So lilac, ooh, queen lime orange. I love the queen lime series. I grew them last year and they were phenomenal. We also have the Benary's yellow, golden yellow, and we have lime. We also have queen lime, just queen lime, not queen lime orange, that was already said. And then we have Zinnia's cupcake mix. I'm trying this. A lot of people said that they don't like it, but I'm going to try it out. I thought it was really cool looking. We also have queen lime red. This was one of my favorites last year. Oh my goodness. So we have some Oklahoma ones too. I have Oklahoma salmon. Oh, there's, I know there's more Oklahoma. Oklahoma carmine. Oklahoma white an Oklahoma pink. <laughs> and then I have this one, it's called Creamy Yellow Giant Dahlia Flowered. Creamy Yellow. This was also one of my favorites last year. It was one of my bigger blooms as well. Canary Bird, which is right here, which is really very canary-like. And then we also have Zinnia Exquisite. These are Baker Creeks. The, all of the Benaries that I have new this year were from Geo Seed. The Johnny's packets that you see were last year's purchase and they were from Johnny's. And then uh, that obviously, oh, this is a Benaries Bright Pink. Sorry, that's the last one in my pile here. And this one packet from Florette, which is the one I'm starting today. So I'll show you guys the progress so far. So 10 days ago, wait, what's the date? Nine days ago, I started these ones right here. So this, is a soil block tray of zinnias, and I have them all labeled right here. Golden yellow, deep red, purple, and lilac. So I started 60 of each, and this is nine days worth of growth. That's pretty decent, really good germination, right? Zinnias almost always have a really good germination rate. I think I'm only missing one or two on each tray. So these were started on May 2nd. Today is May 11th. And now I can show you a tray that I started a little bit prior to that. Oh, this tray I started April 23rd. So these ones are about three weeks old and that's how lush and gorgeous they are. Let me pull out like a soil block to show. So here is one 
three week old zinnia seedling and this is a good size to transplant out i can't transplant out yet i'm gonna wait a little while i still have a couple of cooler nights and then we should be good to go perfect size perfect size now zinnia seeds you might look at them and say mm, really i can put these in a soil block yeah you actually just have to stick the end in the dirt let's do it together so here is the entire packet of those zinnia seeds and now some of them look a little bit different than others but this is um not a seed see this so don't try to plant that <laughs> so the zinnia seeds have a distinct point to them some of them have different shapes but you can see that they do all almost like a shark tooth kind of point some of them can be a little misshapen but they usually almost always have some sort of a point to them so you know which way should be going down so that pointed tip should be going down into the soil just pushing the tip in the other half of the seed is going to stick out of the top and that's okay they kind of push up from the bottom and then they'll the seed kind of grows up with them and then pops off like a seed casing would do These tulips are here because I ran out of room in the fridge. So they're hanging out with me in the garage today. All right, I have that tray of zinnias seeded and ready to go. I'm gonna bring that down into the grow room. And while I'm doing that, I'm gonna send you guys over to Sunflower Steve in Wisconsin. Hi guys, Sunflower Steve here. Just thought I'd uh, take the opportunity today to show you guys how I direct seed my zinnias. I know a lot of folks uh, transplant them, I myself, direct seed them with an earthway seeder, but I just want to show you how I prepare the soil with Big Red, uh, the Big Red tractor here, Clifford we call them. It's a 330 International 1957 model, so it just goes to show you don't have to have the latest equipment to do this. But show you how I till the soil, how I prepare the surface, how I plant, and how I cultivate my zinnias. So I'm not actually going to be planting today since it's way too cold. We're supposed to get down to 24 degrees a couple nights this week. But while I have time before it gets crazy super busy, I just thought I'd show you how I do it. So we'll get to it now. Okay, now that I've got it tilled, nice and powdery, I take the four wheeler and run it over with this lawn roller. It makes, it's only got about, it holds, I can remember it holds, uh, it says 910 pounds completely full. I've only got it about maybe a third full just so it packs it or it levels it out without packing the soil down too much. So anyway, this gives me a nice flat surface to plant in. So I'm going to run down and flatten out real quick and be right back. So now that we have a nice flat surface to plant on, I get out the old Earthway Cedar uh, using the, the Beets and Okra plate, the number 1002 plate. And if you can see in there, I tape off every other hole. So I tape off every other hole on the Okra plate. So I'll just go down one side, right next to the trail, uh, the tire track of the four wheeler. Then I come back down the other side of that and then I go back down the third time and I split the difference between those so it, it fits perfectly, you'll see with my, uh, with my wheel hoe. So here you can see, I then have three rows, evenly spaced, more or less. And what I do then is when I see that first growth coming through the, the soil, that first little green coming up, I then go through with the wheel hoe and scrape off just a little bit of that layer between the rows to cut any other roots of other plants that are coming up and kind of set a channel for future um, cultivating. It kind of lays down a track so the next time you come through, the blade's already been through there and it follows it a lot easier and you don't have to worry about it going off and cutting into your plants. Okay, so now that we have the nice firm bed laid down we planted 
my rows are 12 inches apart, so there's three rows, 12 inches apart, total 36 inches to the outside of the wheels for the four-wheeler. Then I get out, once the plants are up about maybe an inch, I get out the trusty old wheel hoe. This is by Valley Oak Tool Company out of Chico, California. They're great, they're unbelievable compared to your regular hoe. You can zip up and down once you get a nice channel cut the first time you go down. What I mean is the first time you go down, you go down really slow and, and really be careful you don't go where the plants are. But once you've done that, the, the earth has been disturbed there. So the next few times you go down, it just follows those channels and you can zip up and down and get it weeded in no time. Um, it also helps to disturb the soil when they're you know, getting to be two or three feet tall. You can, get, or you can go zooming down there, loosen up the soil, and then I come by and I side dress with fertilizer, some 10, 10, 10 to, to give it a little boost and green everything up and really make them bloom good. So anyway, so what I do is take the hoe, hang on, I don't know if you can see this yet. You take the wheel hoe and go right down the edge. Kinda, I kind of rock it back and forth the first time through just so I don't disturb too much soil towards the plants just kind of rock it down to one edge this is the five and a half inch blade so i go down i go down one side and then i come back down the other side mostly paying attention to just the side closest to the plant you're working closest to to just to, you know get any weeds that might be coming up in there to break the roots up get them up to the surface so they dry out and then come back in about a week and do it again and anything new that comes up you'll wipe it out you do that a couple times and once the zinnias get up high enough um, they really start to crowd out any weeds that come in there. And like I say, then I go through and I side dress with fertilizer. I put a bigger blade on. I got this bigger 10 inch blade that I put on, slides right back on here to do the outside pass for, the, for where, you go, where you go walking. So they have all kinds of different attachments. They've got, you can get down here where you can see me. They've got uh, just finger cultivators. They got all kinds of different attachments for the, for the wheel hoe. It's a, it's a great tool. Like I said, they're a little spendy at about 300 bucks, but the amount of time you save versus a regular hand hoe is just phenomenal. It just goes so much quicker. So anyway, that's how I do my zinnias. Um, and I'm not even planting zinnias this year, honestly. Uh, the, sunflower, the sunflower seeds are gonna be taking precedence over everything else. This field is about three quarters of an acre. I generally plant this whole thing in three different succession, succession plantings of zinnias. Um, this whole field this year is gonna be that dark maroon with the lemon flex in it plant the whole field with that and try to select out to get just those flowers so I'm guessing by the time this whole thing is said and done there might be two or three hundred flowers in this three, three quarters of an acre that give me the color I want so be a lot of chopping and throwing stuff on the ground in here but to get the one color I want so um, be the first time in 20 years I haven't planted zinnias but to be honest with you I'm not too sad about it because zinnias are a lot of work that that head breaks off so easy sometimes and um, like I say, they don't they don't travel well, so you got to be a little more careful with them and stuff. My customers love them, but we're going without them this year. So I hope that helps you out. Talk to you soon. Have a good growing season. So Sunflower Steve might not even be growing zinnias this year. That's a huge crop for him. He's really dedicating himself to increasing the stock of those beautiful sunflowers. I'm excited to follow along with his progress there. So very, very excited about that. He actually has some sunflower videos that he's gonna be sending along as well because he direct seeds all of his sunflowers and I do a mixture of setting out baby seedlings and also some direct seeding later in the season. So um, just when I don't have time to start seeds inside. <laughs> So Sunflower Steve does not net his zinnias. I do not net mine either. I haven't. I haven't had an issue so far. I plant them really close together. I was planting them four inches apart last year and uh, they just kind of grow up together. And, and we don't have really humid weather here. So powdery mildew and issues like that really are not um, something I have to be concerned of. We have a constant breeze here. So there's a lot of airflow in between the plants. I'm probably gonna do six inches apart this year though, um, just because I wanna give them a little bit more room to uh, grow to their potential. You can pinch zinnias or you could grow the first stem and cut it deeply and then that'll be the same thing as pinching and then you'll get side shoots with zinnias for days. Zinnias don't like the cold. You're supposed to plant them after your soil heats up to a consistent 50 plus degrees just like dahlias. They like the warmer weather. In fact, some people don't put theirs into the ground until a month after their last frost just so that soil warms up. I remember reading um, last year someone in California started theirs in like July or something and had blooms in 32 days or something crazy like that. Well, 
I won't be having blooms in 32 days, but I'm excited to get these zinnias in the ground in just a couple of weeks. Well, I have a lot of other stuff to do, getting ready for my seedling sale. I'm still working on that Mother's Day bouquet video for you guys that will be ready this week. I just missing a few elements that I have to put together. So anyway, wanted to give you guys this zinnia video from Sunflower Steve since he shot that video actually over a week ago and sent it along. So I was like, I gotta put this together so that information is, is ready because I know a lot of you guys are getting ready to do your zinnias. And oh, those tools that Sunflower Steve is using, um, that I think would be a great investment. Absolutely. I definitely think that that's something that I would like to purchase in the near future for sure. So anyway, thanks guys for sticking around and we'll see you soon. One. Oh, nope. That one. The last one. Just kidding. I have <gasps> Benary's orange, coral. Did I say these already? I feel like I said these already. I think I already said these. Okay. So I'm not, <sighs> I feel like I have to bend over to get into the shot today. Put the camera up. So sorry. Okay. Look at these pretty tulips behind me. They're pretty. Okay, so I have that tray of zinnia seeded. I'm gonna go bring it down to the grow room, and while I'm doing that, I'm gonna get. Why can't I do the words? Why won't they work? Work, 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 words.